everyone. How's everyone doing today? My name is Gina and I am doing great. Are we ready for the spring tree in the decorative painting series? I know I am. So I sketched in my sketchbook my idea of what I wanted spring to be on my canvases and I've pulled all my paints. Yes, all of those paints are going to be used. So I have a um, the sketch of the tree because the tree is the focal point because you know I wanted it to change with the seasons right so I have this tree already um, sketched out on tracing paper the only thing I don't like about this tree that I changed in the last for winter and for spring is the branches in my I in my head these branches were more elaborate more I don't know whimsical I guess but then when it actually came time to do them on canvas I did not like the way they looked so I just make them regular looking branches in winter and spring and I will do the same in summer but I wanted the tree to stay consistent as far as the trunk and the main branches you know what I'm saying so I went ahead and as I'm looking for my graphite paper, I find my graphite paper, I lift up the tracing paper and then realize, uh oh, I forgot to take the plastic off the canvas. So that wouldn't have worked. I thought that was funny. So I just, I laughed, really laughed out loud about that one. So, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace the tree on just, like I said, the trunk in the main branches because I want those to stay the same because once you get leaves on them and snow because I put snow in the winter you can't really tell about the little branches that I'll end up putting on later you know what I'm saying so anyway so I carefully put that on lightly I try to do it lightly because sometimes it's hard to erase that graphite even though we really didn't I wasn't going to need to erase it but sometimes you need to so now I'm just going to sketch my idea that I've already sketched onto the canvas and I'm just using a regular pencil to do this and I'm trying again to be light-handed even though I'm really not going to erase any of this because I'll need it you know to know where I want to put things so, but I guess I have in my mind when I do woodwork, sometimes you have to erase it. And it's really hard on wood when you draw on wood to do that. Now, one thing that happens, especially for me, I have a sketch in my sketchbook. I really love it. I go to put it on the canvas and it's just not working like the B. I wanted that B to be more over to the side, to the left side of the hive, and there was just no room for him. So I had to move him down. I mean, he's fine there, but I would have preferred him to be where I'd sketched him because I thought it looked a lot better there. But, you know, what can you do? And then I went and drew my bird, and I wanted him to be a blue bird because I've already done a cardinal. And I just wanted him to be a bluebird because that's what I think of when I think of spring is bluebirds. So I meticulously draw out my birdhouse. I measure in everything to make sure it looks right. And then after I get all that done, I realize I'm too far to the right. And then I have to erase everything and start over and move it over to the left. But what can you do? That's just part of, part of art, right? So, and if you've been with me for a while, you know that I do not draw realistically. I don't paint realistically. That is just not my style. I like taking, uh, having creative license with real things <laughs> and making them uh, what I see in my head, you know, what my imagination sees. So, you know, a lot of people think it's elementary, which I've only had elementary training as far as in-person art classes, and that was in elementary school. I didn't even do it in high school. Um, I've never taken one in person as an adult. I just, you know, I've done online classes, and that's about it. So, but I enjoy what I do. I enjoy my style, and I, 
you know, I, I'm not a professional. I never claimed to be a professional at drawing. I just like doing it. I like doodling. I guess this is doodling. I don't even know. I'm just rambling now. But anyway, back to what I'm doing. So I've got everything sketched out and I'm ready to rock and roll. The first thing that I want to do is put crackling paste on the tree. I did that in the fall painting and I just love the effect it does. I love the way it makes the tree really look looks look like it has bark. The texture of it is awesome. I highly recommend you play with crackling play paste if you've not ever played with it. Same thing with molding paste or modeling paste, whatever they call it. Some things call it different things. Look at y'all could you could even use go to Home Depot and grab you some spackling. Spackling will do the same thing. A lot cheaper. It may not be last as long, you know, because it's not artist grade. But hey, if you want to play and not have to spend a lot of money, even though I don't because I use hello coupons, but hey, you can go grab grab you a little thing of spackling for, I don't know, $3 at Home Depot and just go to town and play, see what it does. That's the one thing I love about mixed media is you get to play a lot and you get to get dirty and you just can let your imagination just go wild. Love it. So I will go to the edges as you see because I do paint the, the edges of the canvas. I do the front and the sides as well because it's going to be hanging on my wall. I'm going to get all four of them hung when I get done. Um, I'm not going to, of course, I'm not going to frame them. I'm just going to put them right there in the wall and let everybody see the four seasons that live in my mind. So this crackling paste, though, paste does take days to dry, though, just to let you know, fully dry. Uh, probably the next day I could have gone ahead and painted over it, but I wanted to wait. And not only that, but there was many things going on in my home that I was having to deal with my dog and all of flooring and renovations and stuff like that. So that is why this video is extremely late. It was supposed to be out last week, but that didn't happen. And so I apologize for being late, but I didn't want to rush this because one, I love it. This is one of my favorite things that I've done. I really loved doing this canvas this month. I really loved it, or this season, whatever. So now I'm taking my, let's see, milk chocolate and dark brown, mixing those together to get this brown color that I feel trees look like in the spring. And I'm now taking blue, and this is just blue harbor or harbor blue y'all it was way too dark i almost died when i saw how dark it was i was like oh this is not gonna work this is extremely too dark extremely too dark so i ended up using blue chiffon in it to kind of just lighten it up and it was still too dark even after doing that but it was at least a lot lighter as you can see than what it was but y'all I was like, uh oh, this is not going to work. And I don't have another blue that I think will be the blue that's in my mind, you know, like because how spring is just really bright and cheery. You know what I'm saying? Everything's coming back to life and the sky is just this, mm, just this beautiful blue. You know what I'm saying? So then what I did is I took the blue chiffon and put it on the canvas, took a baby wipe and just started wiping it around. For two reasons. One, to lighten that blue up. And two, I figured it would look kind of like clouds. You know how spring has the wispy little clouds? They don't have those cumulus clouds like summer has. You know, summer has those big fluffy clouds. But spring has the more wispy kind of clouds. And so that is what I wanted to try to translate. And I wanted it too to be way lighter down at the bottom. Just how like the sky does. How it's more dark up at the top and then as you get closer to the horizon it kind of lightens up you know so I'm trying my best to achieve that look by using a baby wipe and I think it worked okay I mean 
I ended up liking it, so it, it worked. It worked just fine and dandy for me. So, and and because I wanted this to be a bluebird, y'all, I was determined for this to be a bluebird. I really need to lighten up around the bird because I was like, this has got to be a bluebird. And I can't have you not being able to see the bluebird because of the blue sky, right? <laughs> so I really worked on that. So I'm putting a base coat on the bird. It's a light French blue, I think is the, the name of it. Because I wanted to make sure that when I went with the lighter blue that it would really pop onto the bird because I knew I was going to shade it with darker a darker blue so now I am using some golden straw to put for his little beaky and he cute I just love him and then I'll go on to the birdhouse and paint it I used bleached sand and burnt sienna the um I my idea was that this um, birdhouse had been sitting outside for so long that it's weathered you know and so that was what my idea was that's why I wanted it this bleach sand like a weathered white look and I wanted the burnt sienna just to do something different you know just to have it a little bit different color and I love burnt sienna it's one of my favorite browns actually because it's got that red in it, and I just really love it. So it will take several coats. It takes a couple of coats on the birdhouse to, to cover it pretty well. Now the beehive, I will end up using marigold on it, and it took a probably, hmm, I want to say it took about three coats to get the, bir the beehive good and covered the bird it took about three coats of that because I will end up using blue chiffon to go over the bird that is what the main color of the bird is is blue chiffon and that's the first coat of it right there I mean there's you can still kind of see that gray behind it so that's why I went ahead and did a few more coats onto the bird and the beehive you could still kind of see some of the white come through from the canvas and I just wanted it more solid so yeah it took it took a few few coats now the tree I only did one coat on the tree because I liked the the dips and valleys looks of it so now I'm going into the awful flowers I hate these flowers I wished I would have not ever done these flowers. They didn't translate what was in my head. <laughs> There's always one thing that is in my head that never works out. And this was it. There were supposed to be tulips, right? And I, I ugh, ugh, what can I say? Oh, they just, they're awful. I don't like them. That's all there is to say about that. But I, I carried on with them. I used watermelon slice for the red. I used um, baby pink for the pink. And there I'm just touching up around the, because I don't know, there was something happened there. I don't think it got the sky. And then for the purple flowers, I'm using wild orchid right now on them. I hate these. Oh my gosh, I hate them. I, <sighs> I think they're just too low on the ground. But then if I put them up too high, they would have looked weird. I don't know. Maybe I needed to make them smaller. I don't know. But if I made them too small, you wouldn't have been able to see what they were. I just, I don't like them. If I were to do this over again, I would not put those in there. So now I'm doing the little bees. And I'm using marigold for the bodies of the bees. And uh, it takes a few coats for the bee as well to get it good and covered so um and then I'm using lamp black for the heads of the bees and for the stripes of the body once uh, the body gets on there and yeah I just oh my favorite thing about this what do y'all think my favorite thing is put it down in the comments what you think my favorite part of this this painting is I'll let you know in the end what my favorite is uh, you could probably tell 
you could probably tell what it is, but I do have a favorite thing on this. So yeah, I'm just working on the bees and I will end up making, now I'm making the, um, what are those branches? And I'm using my script liner and I got to get a new one. This one, I don't know what in tarnation happened to it. It got something stuck in it, which is weird because I always clean my brushes, but it, I don't know. It just, it really made me angry actually because it ruined my brush. I don't know what it was, it was like glue or something. So I'm just drawing my branches on trying to visualize where I'm going to put the leaves because I don't want this to be a full leafed tree because it's spring, you know, and in my mind, summer has the more full, full, full tree leaves, you know. So I am going to use a filbert brush and I believe I started with a six because I wanted it to be kind of big and I'm doing the two stroke method where you put on one side a light color and then you put on the other side of the brush the darker color and then you make a stroke and kind of flip the paintbrush and then you make another stroke to get that darkness in the middle the next time i do this i will slow it down and i will show you but this this took a long time to do <laughs> this video was going to be long that's why i had to speed it up so but i oh i enjoyed making these i used uh, a size six i think a size two because i wanted to vary the the width you know the the width of the leaves so i changed the filbert sizes now i'm using just a stencil brush and using that same color is foliage green that I'm using and putting it down for the grass down at the bottom. Uh, the dark green was uh, a medium hauser is what I used for the dark there. And now I think I'm, sorry, this is off camera. I'm making the wings for the bees. So I'm using buttermilk for that. And they're kind of like just little heart shapes that I'm making. Sorry, I did not realize that was going to be out of camera shot. And uh, I like how I put the leaves over. Now, okay, now this is what happened. Y'all, I thought I was filming all me, me making, uh, doing the shadow work, doing the highlights and all that. But apparently I was not because my bees are done. My hive's done. The birdhouse is done, so I apologize. I really, I did not notice that until I was getting ready to edit this, that my, all that work is gone, and I didn't film it, and I thought it was filmed, so I apologize. But now I'm making the vine that goes around the birdhouse, and I used uh, black green, green black, black green I think is the name of it and then I will use celery green and avocado to make the leaves that go on the vine because I wanted it to be a different color and I'm not using a filbert I'm just using a round brush to do that kind of like how I do in my watercolor and then voila the vines are done and then I wanted little flowers so I use watermelon slice and use the bigger part of the stylus ball to put just dots and then I'll use melon to do smaller dots around the watermelon just to make it look like little flowers are poking out of the vine so I apologize y'all I really do I feel really bad because that's the best part is when you get to do the shadow work like the bird look at the bird and it's so cute I use sapphire for the shadow on that and for the birdhouse I used burnt sienna for the lines like the wood lines on it and then the bees I used burnt sienna to do the bees to shadow the bees and I used uh, sable brown to do the wings on the bee 
hive, I used burnt sienna to make the, the uh, you know, the curves of the beehive. So I apologize. That makes me feel really bad. And then now I'm just going with stickles. This is that clear stickles. I wanted it to glitter, you know, the wings and the honey that's coming off of the beehive there. And then just to try to save these stinking flowers, I put stickles on that, which I, it probably didn't add anything anyway. <laughs> I probably should have just left it alone. Then you wouldn't see it that much because now you you know it glitters so you're like ooh, and then it's like ooh, you know so but yeah <laughs> so not a fan of the flowers would not put those down there again but other than that if you take the flowers away I love it I love the whole thing it just makes me happy it it does make me think of spring and just all new growth new things new birds new bees all that great, great stuff that's happening, you know. I think I think I needed that right now <laughs> with what's all going on. And I stuck my finger in the stickles, so I had to wipe it off and put a new one on there. So there's that little trick. Just take a little brush and wipe off where you've squished it down. And nobody will ever tell unless you're making a video on it. And then I will go over the grass with the medium Hauser Green. But kind of leave some of that lighter color through. And then I will go with the uh, that citron green right there. And make little green tufts of grass. You know like how grass just grows crazy in the springtime. And I really love that too. I thought that added a lot of something to there. And the whole time I'm cussing those stupid flowers. And now... What am I doing now? I don't know. Oh, now I'm shading the tree. I'm going to go ahead and put burnt umber and black together to kind of, you know, make a little so you can see that, ooh, the greatness of that crackle paste. And I will end up going back over that a little bit with milk chocolate because it got a little too dark on me. But other than that, it was fine. And now, I think I'm done. Oh, I'm putting little white dots in the middle of the flowers. And I used a stylus and lamp black to make the little bee things, you know. So, But that's it. So that is my spring decorative painting mixed media piece. I love it. I hope you love it too. Okay, my favorite part is the bees and the beehives that's my favorite I love that it's so cute so well I hope you enjoyed the video I enjoyed creating it again I apologize for the delay and apologize for not filming some of it Ugh, give me a I've had a I've had a rough two weeks y'all all right y'all thanks so much for watching I appreciate it y'all be good to one another and I'll talk to you later bye y'all